The movie opens with a bang as we are introduced to Ray and her boyfriend Ronnie dancing the horizontal tango. But the act is emotional for the couple because Ronnie has to soon depart for deployment. In another part of Tennessee, a man named Lazarus Red is also parting with his wife. He is a religious man who used to be a blues guitarist, but is now leading a simple life as a farmer. After more than a decade of marriage, his wife is finally divorcing him to be with his own brother, leaving Lazarus deeply bitter and angry. As Lazarus is busy in his misery, Ray has already started sharpening someone else's pencil, just hours after Ronnie's departure, where she even chased after his truck, running like Steven Seagal. Her sex addiction makes her unable to stay faithful to Ronnie, even though she desperately wants to. Dressed in skimpy clothes and with a foul mouth, the entire town knows of her promiscuous ways, and it is part of the reason for her strained relationship with her mother. As night falls, Lazarus goes to grab a drink at a local bar owned by one of his friends. He ignores the flirtations of a woman as he is not yet over his divorce and continues drinking silently until his brother walks into the bar. His friend grows cautious but gives them space to talk. The brother says he's there to ask for forgiveness and to make peace, but Lazarus sees right through him. He knows his brother is there to soothe his own guilty conscience and refuses to forgive him. Lazarus does well to hold in his anger until his brother declares that he loves him. Lazarus snaps and grabs his brother by the neck before smashing a beer bottle against the bar. Holding the sharp, broken bottle before his face, Lazarus dares his brother to repeat his sentence. The man is speechless in fear when he smashes the broken bottle again against the pool table and walks out of the bar. The same night, Ray is at a party with her friends. The party is filled with the usual smoking and drinking until it escalates to drugs. Ray lets herself go for the night and gets completely intoxicated, wearing only her underwear by the end of it. Ronnie's friend, Gil, finds her and offers to drive her home and Ray naively agrees. On the way back, he stops his car in the middle of the road and tries to take advantage of her. But this does not faze Ray as she laughs at him, making fun of his baby carrot. In a burst of anger, he beats her with all of his strength until she is silent and unmoving. He thinks he might have killed her and while panicking, kicks her out of his car and quickly drives away. The next morning, Lazarus, who is throwing garbage out of his house, finds Ray on the side of the road. Her face is bloody and bruised and she is unconscious but still alive. He quickly carries her to his living room and lays her down on the sofa before gently trying to wake her up. She weakly calls out a name in her sleep, who he assumes is the man who assaulted her. Since the town they live in is small, he knows exactly who Ray is talking about. But before investigating it further, Lazarus realizes Ray is in immediate need of medicine to relieve the pain she is going through. So he covers her up with a blanket and drives to the nearest pharmacy where his church friend Angela helps him get a strong medicine without a doctor's prescription. Before driving back home, Lazarus goes to meet Tehran, the man Ray was mumbling about. Tehran seems to have nothing to do with her assault, but he does reveal that she is a sex addict and it is a deeper sickness than simple promiscuity. Back in Lazarus' house, Ray has a nightmare about her being assaulted and tries to crawl away to escape, but she is weak with high fever, so she is not able to get too far. Lazarus gets back to find her passed out in the middle of his living room. He wakes her up again and tries to comfort her when she suddenly kisses him. He is frozen in shock for a few moments before snapping out of it and pushing himself away. This only makes her scream and cry out his name. Scared out of his mind, Lazarus ends up running out of the house with his Bible in hand. He slowly regains his composure as Ray continues screaming inside. With a deep breath, he gets inside and carries her into an ice bath to break her fever. When the day turns to night, Ray wakes up and tries to escape, all the while calling out for Ronnie. Lazarus finds her again and takes her back to lay down on the sofa. 
She breaks down crying because she thinks that he is going to take advantage of her, but Lazarus is fast to assure her that he is only trying to help and soothes her by his soulful singing. By this point, he is tired of her trying to run away again and again, so he finds a solution. After she falls asleep, he gets a long metal chain and binds her to the radiator inside his house. Two days later, her fever finally dies down and she wakes up coherent for the first time. Lazarus tries to talk to her about sex addiction, but it all turns into a disaster when Ray realizes that she now has a brand new makeshift chastity belt. She tries to escape, screaming and crying for help, but there is no one around to hear her and she can't get further than a few steps away from the house. Lazarus grabs the chain and forcefully drags her in. He refuses to let her go until he has cured her illness and healed her of her sinful ways because according to him, it is his spiritual duty. A few days pass and he is still keeping her chained up. They ultimately start a pattern where he consistently rejects her sexual gestures but tends to her wounds and provides homemade meals. One day while he is out shopping for dresses, a teenager, Lincoln, who helps out on Lazarus's farm, comes to visit. Ray, who hasn't slept with anyone for days, has lost all her senses and jumps at the miner and pulls him inside. Lazarus comes back right at that moment and angrily chases the teenager away. Coincidentally, his friend, RL, who is a pastor, also comes for a visit right then and discovers that he is keeping Ray imprisoned. Lazarus asks RL to talk to Ray, thinking that it would help her, and it does. Ray becomes a lot calmer after the talk with RL and is more tolerant of her position. She puts on the dress that Lazarus bought for her and helps him cook dinner. That night, she has dinner with Lazarus and his friends and finds out that she is more at peace with herself in the calm environment. While she is having dinner, Ronnie is discharged from the military due to a severe anxiety. He goes straight to the bar for a drink where he meets Gil, who drives Ronnie to his house to look for Ray. She has been out of reach ever since he got back and Ronnie can't help but feel that something is wrong. He knows about her past trauma and abuse and how hard it is on her. Seeing him so worried, Gil only mocks him saying that Ray cheats on him whenever he is out of town and she is probably with another man right now. In a fit of anger, Ronnie beats him up and kicks him out of the house before stealing his car keys and going out in search of his girlfriend again. At the same time, Ray and Lazarus have finished dinner and the guests have left the house. They sit down for a few drinks together and Lazarus makes a toast to freedom. Ray scoffs at him, pointing out that he has imprisoned her, but as it turns out, he is being serious. He grabs the chains on her waist and pulls out a key from his pocket, surprising her by setting her free. At that moment, he has decided that he doesn't have any right to try to change anyone's life and people should live their life however they want. He even offers to take her into town, but she has another request. Agreeing to her request, he pulls out his guitar to play her a song called Black Snake Moan, or as I like to acknowledge it, Black Snake's Moan of Plane. A thunderstorm rages outside, making Ray remember her past where she was abused by an older man, but Lazarus' singing works as an anchor to keep her from losing herself in those horrible memories. Later in the morning, Lazarus takes Ray into town. He sells vegetables from the back of his truck while Ray goes to confront her mother about the abuse she suffered at the hands of her mother's partner. Her mother, however, refuses to take any accountability and instead shifts all the criticism to Ray. She even goes as far as to say that the only thing she is sorry for is giving birth to Ray and not aborting her. Hearing this, Ray flies into a rage and grabs a broom to beat her mother. She throws stuff from the store's shelf at her mother while crying and yelling. Outside, Lazarus is talking to Angela and feels a bud of romance grow between them. While they are having fun flirting, he sees people gathering outside the store and hears someone screaming inside. He quickly rushes in and helps Ray calm down from her distress. 
He carries her out of the store while passing by Angela, who gives him a distasteful look, most likely because she has misunderstood their relationship. Back home, Lazarus gives her a bath, and they prepare for sleep, but both of them remain wide awake. Impulsively, Lazarus decides to play at the local bar, so he tidies himself up, picks up his guitar, and tells Ray to get dressed. They drive to the bar and Lazarus sets up to play a blues concert for a large crowd of people. Slowly but surely, Ray starts to let loose and dance and have fun with a smile on her face. But unbeknownst to her, Ronnie is outside the bar, intently watching her every move through the crack on a window. Come morning, Lazarus wakes up to Ray trying to play a song on the guitar. She is not very good at it, so he offers to play it for her while she sings. Disrupting their peaceful morning, Ronnie suddenly sneaks up behind Lazarus and aims a gun at him. He had followed the pair to their house after they got out of the bar last night. In a fit of rage, he hits Lazarus with the back of his gun and kicks him on the floor before pointing his gun at Ray. Ronnie looks at her furiously and yells, it hadn't even been a week since he said bye 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 and she had already thrown herself into the arms of another man. Lazarus recovers from the attack and starts taunting him, redirecting Ronnie's anger towards himself instead of Ray in order to protect her. He continues to get close until the gun directly touches his chest and dares him to shoot. Ronnie lets go of the gun and slides down onto the floor in an anxiety attack. Ray rushes to help him and cradles his face while trying to calm him down. Seeing the pair of troubled youths, Lazarus picks up his phone to call RL to his house immediately. The pastor makes them sit on the sofa and kindly listens to what they have to say. Ronnie expresses the sadness and the helplessness he feels because Ray is the one who has helped him get better from his anxiety and PTSD, but he can't help her overcome her own troubles. Ray, in turn, takes a deep breath to gather her courage and tells him that she knows she has done some bad things, but she still loves Ronnie and wants him to keep loving her. After the tearful confessions, they decide that they are stronger together and do not wish to part from each other. The next scene is the wedding day of Ronnie and Ray. It is a simple wedding without any fanfare and with only a handful of people. Lazarus has invited Angela to help Ray get ready, and Lincoln, for some reason, is acting as Ronnie's best man. Lazarus himself plays the role of her father and walks her down the aisle. Instead of a ring, Ronnie gifts Ray with a small chain which he ties around her waist, and they finally seal their union with a kiss. Lazarus feels a sense of pride as he watches them drive away and he silently reaches out to hold Angela's hand. While on the road, a large truck honks loudly right next to them, triggering Ronnie's panic attack and one of Ray's spells. Ray grabs the chain on her waist and manages to pull herself together and then moves to comfort Ronnie, and he slowly calms down. There would be many instances like this in the days to come, but they will always have each other to rely on. And that's a wrap for this movie recap. Thanks for watching.